welcome, 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 welcome boys, welcome girls, welcome parents, teachers and guardians. I hope you, the parent, got a chance to sit with your children, dance with them, sing with them, laugh with them and at some point during the last nine hours of this festival. For those who are just joining us for the first time this evening, I'll give a quick recap of how to navigate your way around this online book festival. Take a look at your screen. Across the bottom are some tabs. The first one on the left is the main auditorium tab. Click on this tab whenever you want to join any of the sessions today. All the sessions today are open and free to attend. Next to that is the schedule tab, where you see the program lineup for the festival. The book tab takes you to the fabulous book exhibition where you can browse through books and other products or services from a myriad of book publishers, booksellers and other retailers. Buy books right away for download or delivery. Next, you have the art tab and that takes you to the art exhibition to see some works by talented young Nigerian artists. You can give your feedback and get a certificate of attendance by clicking on the certificate tab and tell us exactly how you would like your name to appear on your certificate. So there's lots to see, hear, read, learn and do at this year's Akada Children's Book Festival online. Remember, you should build up your library by buying books from the different booksellers in the virtual exhibition hall. And if any of the paintings at the art exhibition catches your fancy, drop a note to the artist letting them know how much you like their work. It will be very encouraging for them to know their work is appreciated. Congratulations to the winner of the children's illustration competition based on this year's festival theme, Light Up the World, Share a Story. The winner of the Akada Children's Book Festival Illustration Competition was announced earlier today. Did your children enter the competition? Perhaps they made it to the top five. Congratulations to all the participants and to the winners of the gift vouchers from the School Kids Store. Check out at Akada Festival on Instagram to find out who made it to the top five and who the overall winner is. Please. Send us a message using the chat box right now. Browse through the various tabs on your screen. Fill the feedback form for each session you participate in. And if you would like us to email a certificate of attendance to you, remember to let us know exactly how you would like your name to appear on the certificate. Simply click the certificate tab to get started on these. So far, today at the festival, we have had book readings, Story time, book chats, children's comedy with Chi Girl, our star performing artist of Gigglebox. We've had dance classes, sing alongs, workshops for children. Remember to get the certificate of attendance emailed to you. But after the festival is over, the fun doesn't have to end. We've got you covered. Go to the Google Play Store to get the Clever Clogs app. The app is perfect for children aged 2 to 6. If you have been looking for a way to teach young children how to tell the time, learn their shapes and colors, this app will be just the thing for you. So check it out right now and also give us a feedback which we will use to make the app even better for us all. Starting now, we will have sessions for parents, teachers and guardians on topics like raising money-wise children, Million Dollar Baby, recognizing and nurturing talent in your children, and developing emotional intelligence in children. If you missed any session of the amazing Akada Children's Book Festival 2020, you have the chance to watch the festival on YouTube after today. My name is Joyce Daniels, and I will be directing the flow of events for the next few hours. Sit tight, let the sharing begin with Semi Lolua Adeshina, breaking down the necessary skills in teaching and communicating to your children the fundamental skills of effective money management, using examples from her book, Kolo Banks, written specifically for kids.
Camilo Lua Adesino is a seasoned British curriculum teacher and a consultant with more than a decade-old experience. She cut her tooth as a teacher while working with other curriculums in the Nigerian system of education. The behavioral patterns of children over the years laced with the rich African culture inspire her works with fun and drama. She reviews educational textbooks and rewrites them for leading publishing firms in Africa like Learn Africa, formerly called Longman. She lives in a fairy world where stories are written and flow endlessly from diaries of dreams and pages of excitement. She's a prolific writer and author. This is what she's committed to. Her published books include Lagos State-approved Bantu, The Big Fat Bully, an award-winning anti-bullying book series arguably the first anti-bullying book series in Africa. Her books are usually strategically revolved around moral activities and projects that fix the moral and value system challenges in children. Other published books include Pharma Bami series, Happy Jappy series, Mini Mani Mo, Dark Arises, and more. She churns out book day in and day out. This is her lifelong passion. Tamila Lua's style of writing is a creative blend of David Williams and Francesca Simon's humor and wit laced with Enid Blyton's mild fairy tale enchanting world, yet heavily and deeply rooted in her strong African heritage and culture. She is the chief reading guide at Love Africa's Readland Book Club and community library powered by Vast Vision Global. Hello, welcome to Akada Children's Book Festival. We'll be talking about raising money-wise children in this segment. Okay, now the second seven secrets of raising money-wise children are found in this book, Kolobanks, the Bilonia Boy. In the book, you find the seven secrets of the Bilonia mind revealed in an African story. Now parents, listen, rule one is, Money finishes when you spend it carelessly on wants and you do not save any of it. Now, we need to teach our children the difference between wants and needs. Many a times our children are always saying, I want, I want, I want. Everything that attracts them. Ah, I want those sweets. I want the new shoes. I want the new pink bag. Mom, you didn't see the fine shoes my friend wore at that party. I want a better one. So children are always asking, wanting, wanting, wanting. But they've forgotten that the basic needs are the most important things in life. And that is hair, water, food, shelter, clothing. Okay, so many a times we indulge our children by giving them so many wants. And they don't even understand that the basics of life are the most important things in life. So at that, most, most of the time, they derail because you give them everything they want. We need to make them understand that when they spend their money totally, carelessly on everything they want and they don't save anything, nothing remains in their hand. And one of the reasons why we need to raise a money savvy child is because we don't want them to depend on us in, their old, in our old age. Imagine you're already 80 and 90 and your child is still at home begging for food. How will that look like? So we need to train and teach our children that they need to know the differences between wants and needs. Wants, there will always be wants, but needs are the most important things. Wants never finish. Needs are the basic things in life. So they need to stay and want the basics. Rule two, money finishes when you spend it carelessly on wants and you do not save some of it. Now, children need to learn the habit of saving. If you, if you are given a pocket money of 100 naira per week, they need to save at least 10 or 20% of it. And they have to know wh where they are saving it. Are they going to be saving it in their own colo, I mean the savings box? Or are they going to be saving it in your hand, in their parents' hands? They need to know the essence and the reason why they are saving. Now, 
an adage says that abuse of anything is, if, if, the, if the reason for doing something is not known, abuse is inevitable. Some children can save and say, at Christmas, I'm going to blow it all on sweets. Some will say, I'm going to save so that I can buy gifts for my parents during Christmas. Some will even save and say, I'm going to give this to charity at any time, maybe at my party or something. But children need to know that money finishes. Money will not always be there. Yes, so they need to save some of it to be able to put it into an investment or to keep it to help someone on a rainy day. We should know that life may, we, there are always seasons in life when we need a cover and things will not always be rosy. So we need to teach our children to save as much as possible. Either to invest it or to keep it for the rainy day or to use it to buy some of those things that they want and they're always craving for. So dear parents, we need to tell our children that they should use their own ad and money to buy some of those things they want. That chocolate, that new pink dress, that new shoe, that new sunglasses. Oh, you can just tell them, sweetheart, why don't you use your own ad and saved money to buy that thing they want? And that way they will value those things that they buy with their money. Now let's go on to rule three. You will become what you believe. This is a billionaire mindset. You will become what you believe. This is a billionaire mindset. Many a times, our children believe so many things. They don't even know what they want to become. But one of the things we need to teach them to be money-wise is whatever they think they will become, they need to begin to think it. If your child thinks I'm going to become a millionaire, it's time to begin to say that to themselves and believe it with all their heart. If your child believes I'm going to be a billionaire, it's time to tell them, to say it to themselves every morning, and they should believe it. If they believe they're going to be the salt of the earth, that they will learn to nations, it's now they, are, they should begin to say to themselves. And the reason is this, we become what we believe. Many children have been brainwashed and they've seen their parents suffer to get money. In fact, they've seen their parents go from riches to rags or from being rich to begging or collecting salary at the end of the month to begging for money the first week of the next month. So we need to let this student have a billionaire mindset that I'm going to be a billionaire and I will borrow nations or give to people my money. And so when they begin to learn the value of believing what they will become, they will become it. So the more you tell them to say, I'll be a billionaire, the more they will become it. It's important. Because many of us parents grew up with this mentality. I, when I was a child, I was never told I'll be rich. In fact, my mommy was a principal, I one time a vice principal, and I know how we had to struggle to pay school fees. And no one ever told me to tell myself how I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be a millionaire. So when I started out in life, a little bit, I too had to struggle and had to change my mindset. That I don't have to struggle the way my mom did. I don't have to beg for things the way my mom did. But I know that I can easily get what I want because I believe it. So the more we tell them now to believe something, the more they will become it. Not what they saw us do. But as they believe it, they too will become better than us in their generation. Then rule three. The more you learn, the more you earn. The more, and you can learn a lot by reading good books without giving excuses. Now, one of the richest men in the world, Big Gates, reads like 50 books in a year. And that translates to the fact that he reads like two books every month. Now, Bill Gates also said something. He said, the day we stop learning is the day we grow old. Now, if you want to become a billionaire like Jeff Bezos, like Bill Gates, like Warren Buffett, like the greatest men in the world. I can tell you their secret is that they read a lot. Now, many a times, you, what we want to become or what you want them to become is not what they see in you. But they need to read a lot of books also for them to become so rich. Now, if the richest men in the world are reading, who are we as parents not to read? One of the things you need to show your child is the, is the habit of seeing you read. And the more they read, the more they learn. The more they are so knowledgeable and the more they lead in their field of endeavor. Now, many of, your, of, of us parents are not reading. I read a lot. My children see me read. And my children, by God's grace, have reached at least a level. My, my daughter is the, the youngest OAP in Nigeria. She was just chosen for the Union Bank Awari team. One of the ways I can say Mojoin got there is because she, read, she reads a lot. 
She sees her mom read. She sees her dad read. We can't raise a money savvy generation without getting them to read. She's a ch child author. At the last kids print off fair, she, she had over 50 books and she sold them out. She went from table to table telling them to, to buy her book. And you know how adults are? They will look at her and they will smile and say, wow. And some even gave her money for the book without collecting the book and told her, because you just came to sell your book to me, I will buy from you without collecting a dime from you. And they even asked for her bank account and paid into it. Now that's a way to teach your child to earn from childhood. Now many children, we also learn to become what they want to do through books. Now some of the children who discovered themselves through the face of books is, I will keep saying it, Bill Gates did, Warren Buffett did. Warren, Warren Buffett borrowed a book at the age of seven. 1,000 ways to make $1,000 at the age of seven from his public library. And what he learned from the book, he began to sell from door to door. By the time he was 16 years, guess what? He had a net worth of $6,000. Now he's the fifth richest man in the world. If your child is not reading, your child cannot earn. And if your child is not earning, your child will keep making excuses. And how does your child become money savvy? So we need to inculcate these habits in them early that they need to learn by reading a lot of books. Now, there are times they don't have a mentor to guide them at this age. There are times they don't even have someone to teach them whatever they want to become. But many other times, I found that children discover who they are meant to be through books. And many other times, there's something that opens up in them. And the more they read, the more they discover, wow, I can do this. I can do that. And they begin to do, mom, can I make bangles to sell? Mom, can I make a portrait and sell to my cousins? And before you know it, your children are making money. Please help them read books. Please help them read books. One funny thing I remember is Mark Zuckerberg. When his, his daughter, they asked her, what does your daddy do? And she said playfully, my daddy has a bookshop. He has so much books in the house. He sells books. And Mark Zuckerberg laughed. No, I'm not a book seller. That is just because the house is filled with books. So she thinks we sell books in this house. She doesn't know her father. He is one of the richest men that started Facebook and Instagram. So teach your children to read, please. It will take them to places you have never been. Rule four, if no one gives you a seat at the table, Grab the whole table. If no one gives you a chance, create a chance. Now let's teach our children to create chances. In this world and age, chances are not given to children. They need to take it. How can they take it? When your child has discovered his or herself, one of the things they'll start doing is you start seeing them do a lot of things. A child will design something that is beautiful. A child will design or make something beautiful. Don't tell them it's not good enough. Celebrate them as if they've done the best thing in their whole world. The reason is when you celebrate them, they will do more. And the more they do it, the more we discover their gifts. And the more the world discovers their gift, the world will pay for that gift. Now, help them to create a chance for themselves. No one gives anyone a chance at the table. No one, <laughs> there's, the, the, the sky good is big enough for everyone to soar. But the truth is, the table is filled up. You need, you don't wait till your child is 20, 21 to fight for a seat at the table. Let them begin to fight for a seat at the table now that they are young. And most of the achievements, when they are looking at the achievements by the time they are 21, 22. Wow. Imagine that, huh, imagine that there's a, a lunch on and your, your children are already receiving awards. Like my daughter is 12, she has received three awards. Yes. So when, she has, when your child starts getting awards at this age, imagine what that will do to their self-esteem. Imagine what it will do to their mates. So we need to help children to create a chance for themselves now because the world out there is not friendly. So you need to allow them to come up with their gifts and let their gifts shine. There's a song that says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You don't wait till you are 25, 26 to allow their light to shine. Let their light shine now from age 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And at that level, the, you will know that they have achieved a lot. They have even started paying money into their account. My same daughter has received her first illustration. Someone just called us from Akwaibo. Can Mojoi illustrate a book for me? And she illustrated the book and she was, her first illustration, she was paying money into her account. We don't need to wait till they are 15. She's, she's just turned 12 like some days ago. We don't need to wait till that. Okay, her younger brother is nine. At the age of eight, at the kid's fair, my son won 
the best bees potential. What did he do? He wrote a book titled The Super Brain Boy. And why did he write the book? He had he was struggling with mathematics. And he, he was so bad that he was scoring zero, one over five. And his father sat him down and said, son, why is this happening to you? Why is it that you are jittery with mathematics and there's no self-esteem? In fact, he lost his self-esteem. There was nothing he wanted to read anymore because he just didn't understand mathematics. What worked was that simple affirmation. I am going to teach mathematics. I will teach others. I know mathematics. I can teach others. And all of a sudden, he said, I will write a book. It's called The Super Brain. Oh, I have a super brain. I will know mathematics and I will teach others. And he wrote the book. And he won the best beast potential at the Kids Beast Fair. Teach your children not to make excuses and to give them a chance at the table now. And then you've made the future for them. Let me run to the rule five. One way to grow your money is solving problems for people. But make sure you get involved with what you like doing. An entrepreneur is someone who solves problems for people for a fee. Now, gone are the days when you are doing something at home and your mommy says shut up. When I was a child and I was talking in front of the mirror, my mom would tell me, go and sit down. What is wrong with you? You talk a lot, you talk too much. But I found out that my children, especially my daughter takes after me. She does that a lot. She's always talking and all that. What we did for her was we channeled it into our Instagram page. And before we knew it, the first time she was on radio, everyone was calling in, is that an adult talking? Is that, and we were like, he's a child. That was our first time on radio. We were able to channel our gifts into radio. Now she's the youngest OAP on radio. And she was also the one chosen for the Union Bank Awari. You need to allow your children to shine. Not force them into your mood. An entrepreneur is someone who solves problem for a fee. My son solved the problem. Super brain boy, he didn't know mathematics. He wrote the book and the book won the kids best, fair, best business potential of the day. And Every day now he tells us, I want to make a super brain. He made a super brain boy toy. Every child loves it. He sold this to every child that day at, for 100 naira. One tiny toy, it was funny. But every child wanted the book. Every child wanted the book. And when the book finished, he kept selling the toys. See, the toy, one tiny toy like this. So, but it came out of a time that he didn't know mathematics and he was struggling for it. So there's something in all our children. But make sure they get involved with what they like doing. When we don't force children to be doctors, nurses, lawyers, and that thing they love doing, we encourage them to do it. I will tell you, your child will shine. And that means you are giving them a, a, a seat at the table. You are giving them a chance to shine in life. You are not waiting to feed them, to spoon feed them. Mommy gave me this. But they have their own savings. And whatever they want, even if they want the old <laughs> football field, and they want the old Wimbledon Stadium in London, they can have it with their savings, just tell them to keep saving. Now my daughter has been telling me I want Infinix. At what age? And we've told her, save for it. So when your savings have reached the amount you can get an Infinix phone, then you can buy your Infinix phone. Thank you for listening. And I hope you have been able to teach and explain to us how to raise money-wise children. Now, if you want to know more about raising a money-savvy generation, there are lots and lots of concepts in this book. And at the end of the book, I trust you, your child will be writing their goals, setting smart goals. I'm telling you. And your child will be telling you about the business or what they want to do that they've never told you before. Just check it out in this book. And also, if you want to reach out to me or talk to me, reach, you can reach out to me on Instagram at readlandng. And let's talk and just how to raise the money-wise generation. Thank you. The truth is, there's no limit in age or how to start. It starts from when, let's say, from the time when they are conversant with uh, mommy and they are telling you, oh, mommy, this happened in school. From the age, you know, they can tell you everything that happens during their day. And you know they have an understanding of that this is 10 naira, this is 20 naira, this is 30 naira, or this is 15 naira. It's from that age you begin to tell them. First of all, tell them the money denominations in Nigeria. If you are in the US, tell them the dollars and all that. Tell them the pounds. Let them know this is money. Okay, and so money has value. And so they, knew, they need to know that you earn this money when you do something. So one of the things you can tell them is when daddy comes, when grandma comes, when one uncle comes and says, oh, I dash you this, or it's your birthday, 
take this. They need to begin to know that, ah, I can't spend all of this. I need to save part of it. Even if they want that craving, that chocolate, like, you need to give them, you need to withdraw some of the money from them. We are going to save this. And then that big thing, maybe they need a new plasma TV in their, tele in their room and uh, all that. You tell them, you're going to put part of that money for that TV. You're going to put some of the money you have saved. We're going to buy it together. So from the moment they can tell you everything that happens during their day, tell them the value of money. Money has a value. Because some children still think money grows at the back of their house. Oh, my daddy has one tree planted. So let's go and pluck it. Easter, I can tell you the facts. They still feel money grows from the ground. So you need to tell them the value of money. Then they need to save some of it. Then one of the things you need to tell them also is, if there's a way to make money, house choice, maybe that one they don't like doing. And I don't say indulge them because now they become, maybe they become too spoiled to even do it. Oh, today, if you do this for me, I'm going to give you this. Ah, thank you, mommy. And then they know that at that level, they begin to understand and realize that, ah, I can earn by doing some of these things. They themselves will come and meet you. <laughs> and that way you have woken up their senses, their senses of money and the, the value for money. Ah, I have to work for this thing to get this. I have to work for this to get it. I even know some of my friends, when their children read, hmm, because they, they know they struggled to read as a child. So this is what they did to their children. They'll buy books. If you can read this book, if I very big book, so, and you can summarize it and give me a good review, I will give you so, 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 and so money. So imagine your child earning for reading. It tells me that you can go and pack 100 books. <laughs> and your child will simply read it, review it. And I can tell you, hmm, there's so much value and knowledge in books. Try it. Before you know it, your child is the next Wale Shoinka, the next Bill Gates, the next Warren Buffett, the next Jim Quick. And they, and then, don't let me tell you the story of Ben Carson. How he was a dollar and he read and he became the best child in class. Trust me, please use these principles. It will work for you. Thank you for listening. If you have more questions for me, reach out to me on Instagram at readlandng. I'll be delighted to answer your questions. And then this book is loaded with more invaluable secrets for your child. So reach out to me and you can also get copies from me. Thank you for listening. I'm super excited for what your child will become after this session. Thank you. Indeed, children should be taught about entrepreneurship, the reward of diligence, the benefits of productive habits, the strength of character, resilience, and more from an early age. These lessons are vital to building wealth. The sooner they begin imbibing these qualities, the better they will be. You can definitely wrap great lessons in entertaining stories that engage young readers and are suitable for read aloud sessions and family fun. Remember, we have great books and amazing artworks to browse through here at the festival. You know what's more? The Clever Clugs app is now available on the Google Play Store. This app is perfect for children aged two to six, teaching them about how to tell the time, colors, and shapes. Also, there are free books added to the app every now and again. Check out the new app to enjoy all the activities that we have dreamed up. Also, please give us your feedback as this will help us improve the app to make it even better. Get your certificate of attendance by clicking the button that says Certificate and then fill the form. The 2020 Akada Children's Book Festival, themed Light Up the World, Share a Story, could not have been put together without the support of our partners. We say a big thank you to Flutterwave, NLNG, Upbeat, Children's International School, Living Fountain Seeds of Hope School, Wazobia FM, Cloud Studios, amongst others. We are also going to give a quick shout out to the Association of Children's Authors and Illustrators of Nigeria, which is a recently formed organization focused on the growth of this vital industry. You can find out more about Akane by sending an email to hello at akane.org. Shoma Omerua, aka Seaflow, aka Chigo, 
is a singer, songwriter, comedian, MC, compare, brand influencer, and actress who was born in Lagos, where she lived until she moved to the US in 1994. She remained in the US for the next 12 years, where she continued to pursue her passions while teaching drama to kids at the Boys and Girls Club and in the high school where she worked as a French teacher. Choma has taken part in various theater productions, such as Lauren Hansberry's Raising in the Sun, one act plays such as It's Not My Fault, and she even dabbled in the genre of absurdism, taking on roles in a play called The Bow Soprano. Choma is in her element on stage, especially in musical. Chema Mera, aka Che Gol, and welcome to Giggle Box on the Akada Children's Book Festival. Yes, we're going to be giggling, so let's get started. Hmm, okay, so riddle me this, riddle me that. I am something. The more I dry, the wetter I get. Think about it. The more I dry, the wetter I get. Can you guess? I'll tell you. A towel! The more I dry, the wetter I get. Get it? Get it? Get it? Now tell me, <clears throat> why was the math book so sad? The math book was so sad, why? Because it had so many problems in it, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> We understand that it's not just about sending some money home for the holidays. We just received the money right now. You're welcome, Mom. I told you I would send it. That was so fast. I was thinking we'll get it tomorrow. Yes, Dad. That's why it's called an instant transfer. Thank you, my baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm your only baby here. It's knowing that anywhere, anytime, anyway, you can always pay. Flutterwave, simplifying payments for endless possibilities. It's Joyce Daniels again, and we want to hear firsthand from a book lover who has taken a step in helping children through her literary club on the importance of reading and reading aloud. Meet Adeshola Ali as she shares some of her thoughts with us. wife, mother, and entrepreneur. She is a full-time Read for Fun advocate for children. She blazed through school reading all titles and she just could not stop. And this brought about the idea of starting the Kids Literary Circle Book Club to get other children of ages 1 to 12 begin to love books from an early age. The Kids Literary Circle Book Club wants children to develop a well-rounded growth and future using books to activate science, technology, engineering, art, and math. They bring the book to life and also engage in several activities around the book to engage children. The idea is to show children that there is so much one can do just by picking up a book. That way, it makes it more exciting for them to want to read and explore.
Welcome to the Akada Children's Book Festival 2020. My name is Adeshola Ali and I'm the creative director of Kids Literary Circle. It's a reading club for children where we hope to develop a well-rounded growth and development using books to activate science, technology, engineering, art and math. And um, we want to bring books to life for children so that they can appreciate it and get to love to read books. I'm here at the Akada Children's Book Festival to answer a few questions. And the first question is, um, a lot of children already associate reading with schoolwork and they see reading as a chore. And for us to change that narrative, we have to introduce books to them in a fun and enjoyable way. Once the children have realized that books can be fun, then it's easier for them to pick up books and get lost in books. Okay, so first of all, what is reading out loud? Okay, reading out loud is when you read a book, like this and you read it out okay you're not reading it inwardly you're reading it out you're trying to mimic all the expressions in the book making the funny faces and trying to make the book come to life that's what reading aloud is and reading aloud is actually one of the most effective ways of getting children to love books so if you want your child to get to love books you have to engage them in reading aloud. And how do you read aloud? Um, how long does it take you to read aloud to your child? You can read aloud for 10, 15 minutes every day. You can pick a time, you can make it um, a routine and um, just decide on what works for you, for your family. Um, reading aloud is a great bonding time for you and your children and there is no age barrier for reading aloud, okay? You can start reading aloud to your child right from when they are babies and right up to when they are 12 years old. Even when your child can read by themselves, you still can read to them aloud because children love having um, time with their parents. Children love you to take time with them and children can also read aloud to their younger ones so there is no age barrier in reading aloud and reading aloud helps your child to build up their vocabulary you're reading a book together you're making predictions you're guessing what's going to happen on the next page so there are lots and lots of things that your child can gain from reading aloud We read every single day of our lives, right from when we wake up in the morning, right up to when we get to bed at night. So every day we wake up, we have to look at our, our watches, what time is it, we're reading like that. We don't know we're reading, but we're reading. Every single thing that we do, when we leave our houses and we get in our cars, we're reading the road signs, we're looking at the billboards, we're reading. So reading is really, really important because it's, that's, that's, that's the foundation for you. You read in school, you read, you want to um, read a recipe, you want to bake a cake, you're going to have to read the recipe, okay? You're watching TV, you're going to read, you're going to read what program are you going to watch, you're going through the TV guide, you want to read what you're going to watch next. So reading takes place every single time and we don't even know. So it's very important for us to embrace reading and to get our children to love to read. And that's why we're here at the Akada Children's Book Festival, okay? They're, it's for you to get your children to realize the importance of reading and to embrace reading as a whole. Thank you, stay tuned. Um, there are lots of more amazing things lined up for you here. Stay safe and take care. I hope you're going to read more to your children. Um, embrace reading aloud to the children and also get your children to join a reading club. You can sign up for my reading club. It's called the Kids Literary Circle. 
go on to our Instagram page at Kids Literary Circle, send us a DM, and we're ready to have your children on a reading adventure. Stay tuned for our next workshop for parents, teachers, and all adults raising the new generation. It's all about recognizing and nurturing talented children. We start at 6 p.m. Then at 7 and 8 p.m., we have two workshops and a book chat for parents, teachers, and caregivers this evening. At 7 p.m., we have From Lava to Butterfly, which is about getting the right balance between giving your children freedom to grow and helping them make the right choices. The last workshop for today is Developing Emotional Intelligence in Children. After the workshop, we will be closing this year's Children's Book Festival with a rather special book chat with a rather special teacher. Curious? Stay tuned to find out who I am talking about. I hope you'll be joining us. Do take a moment to invite other parents that need to be part of these sessions. Hello everyone, my name is Chema Almera, aka Che Gall, and welcome to Gigglebox on the Akada Children's Book Festival. Yes, we're going to be giggling, so let's get started. Hmm, okay, let's do another knock knock joke. Knock knock. Who's there? Boo. Boo hoo. Oh, don't cry, it's only me. <laughs> Boo hoo. <laughs> Somebody tell me, what are the strongest days of the week? Think about it. The strongest days of the week. It'll be Saturday and Sunday because the rest are weekdays. Get it? Weekdays? <laughs> weekdays?
On that note, let me warmly welcome you to the 2020 edition of the Akada Children's Book Festival here in Lagos. This year it's virtual and my name is Ifoma Idigbe. I'm the chairman of Clever Clogs Limited. So what is this festival all about? It's really to say that books are important and that the way to get children to read is to expose them to books at an early age. The way to get anybody to read is for them to start reading early and to promote authors that are of African descent since we're Nigerian, since Akada Books Festival and Clever Clocks um, Nigeria Limited is, 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 is a Nigerian organization. My name is Abiola Seriki Ayeni, Director General Office of Education Quality Assurance, Lagos State Government. Firstly, it's crucial that you position yourself for government partnerships. Government is committed to providing an enabling environment to all of our stakeholders, not just a privileged few. You must keep this in mind as you create your end products. If you want to write engaging children's books, you need to pay attention to detail and I'll explain in a bit. Number two, decide. You are going to have to be very specific and make decisions about what type of book, what category, and so on and so forth that you want to write for, um, about and for. Number three, read. You are going to have to read copious amounts of industry material even before you get to number four. And number four is to write. Step one. We can't go anywhere without words. So the first step is scripting. Yeah, so you have your book and it's got beautiful words in it, but you need to get it ready for the screen. When you were writing your book, you should have, not all of you might have, but you should have thought about the world your characters are living in. Now, what does that mean? Um, it means that you have to give them a history, a backstory, where do they live? Um, who do they live with? What kind of housing do they live in? What is their social bracket? All those things. What are the family dynamics or the dynamics between the characters? How do they see the world? And in building this history and backstory for your characters, you give them a unique voice. So that's the first part in building the script before you even kind of start fleshing things out. So fleshing things out, you have a book and it has wonderful words on every page. However, your two pages of a book which might cover one scene in the book, those two pages aren't going to cover an entire scene in a script or in an animated episode. So what you need to do is you need to take that scene in your book and flesh it out. What's the action that happens in those two pages? Okay, so first thing is what is animation essentially? Animation is a method of photographing sequential drawings, models, and even puppetry to create an illusion of moments. That's essentially what it is. So whether it be drawings or models, either it be drawings like in form of 2D or in models in form of 3D, or even puppets, which is stop motion. It's it's a, it's a way to arrange those movements in a way that it gives you an illusion like they're moving. So that's what happens in animation. You actually believe that this character is alive, you believe the story, you believe who they are, and all that is because you know, the entire production has been animated for you to believe that. So the sixth thing you have to consider, or at least I considered, in choosing the right publishing platform is reporting. Not so important to everyone, but I'll tell you why it was important to me. Now, if you really want to make an informed decision about you know, how your book or your content is selling, sometimes you want to see the reports. You want to see how many people are buying which book, at what time, from what country, when do they buy, and that's why the reporting is important. If you're going to include illustrations in your work, you need to understand that that is not the way to think. You're not just writing a linear story where you're going from the beginning to end and you're going to decide where you're going to put illustrations, especially if it's a picture book. It actually takes a lot more planning than that. 
The next thing you want to determine, your characters. What kind of characters do you want to portray in your book? Do you want human characters? Or you do want animal characters? Animal characters are easy for children to relate to it. But human characters show them the reality that they are used to. So you need to determine which character you want to portray in your book. Do you want it to be animals conversing? Or do you want to be a discussion between humans? Children, of course, and adults. Because your focus is at children, you have to ensure that the characters reflect children's reality. So also, you need to also understand how users use the internet as it relates to looking for a product or looking for your book. Um, there's what we call the zero moment of truth, that's Z-M-O-T. Now, truth is when anybody's looking for anything, um, especially when you're using the internet, you need to go through that Z-M-O-T, zero moment of truth. Let me just give you a brief summary of the channels that you may consider um, putting yourself out there on. So it's, this can either be your business or yourself personally. I tend to think that it's important to have a representation both for your business and for you. As an author, you want to stand out. As an author, oftentimes people want to know the person behind um, the writings. Part of getting paid um, ropes into knowing the legal aspect of things, which is um, the contract. So if you were doing illustrations for a client, it's very important for you to have a contract and to go through the contract carefully and be sure that the terms are terms that you are comfortable with. You can have a lawyer review it with you, but working professionally without a contract is not advisable. What is illustration? Illustration is the visual interpretation of verbal content. It could be stories in text, it could be animations, it could come in form of object act where objects are used to express the meaning of a text or a story. It's, I think it's so important to approach the story in a very simplistic way. As the illustrator, it's my job, first of all, to get a hold on the story and say, what's this story about? What really is the author trying to pass across to the children? And what is the very basic message of the book? Once you have that out of the way, you can start to develop the fun parts about how you're then going to translate that message to a child who's reading the book. If your customer doesn't find value in your app, they would delete the app from their phones. It's, I mean, it's what is going to happen. So customers would only keep apps or even download apps that they find value in. So very important that every objective we set for our app must be linked to a customer value. That is very important. That's, I think, one of the most important things, you know, you really need to take out from this workshop. But now let's go to the benefits of editing. Before I even tell you any of the benefits of editing and hiring a professional editor, especially if you can just stretch that narrow cobble pound or penny or dollar a little further to make sure that your work gets the attention it deserves. Well, one, the aim of editing and proofreading is to make your work better. What exciting goal have you achieved? You've written a book, what an exciting goal. What else? What exciting goal have you achieved? Write it. Number five, what topic have you spent hours developing yourself on? Like if you read about it, you research on it, you attend trainings on it, like you're better than the average person because you've developed yourself on that topic. It has been a truly enlightening day with inspiring guest speakers, 10 workshop sessions covering various topics around perfecting your book craft, digital books, and the business of books. If you missed any session, you can always request for the recording via www.cleverclogsbooks.com forward slash Akada. 
If you are yet to register for yourself and the children for tomorrow's event, please hurry now to the website and register. Remember, registration is free. There will be various book readings, story time sessions, music, special kids comedy session done by Choma Omerua, aka Chigal. Book chats, mini workshops for children, and information sessions for parents and teachers. Join us at 8 a.m. tomorrow to 8 p.m. for non-stop fun for the whole family. Please share the highlights of the festival with us using the hashtag Akada2020 at home. Books, books that inspire, excite, and entertain children, parents, and teachers. Visit cleverclogsbooks.com to buy your copies today.